Today is Tuesday, June 5th, 2022. Time is 10.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hello, friends. Dennis Snappy the second here with Sixth Sense Media, and these are my monthly world events predictions for June 2022. I recorded this session, I did two sessions on May 27th and May 28th. Uh, apologies for not getting this up sooner. It's been uh, kind of a busy month here. Actually, my bigger apologies for not posting last month's session. Uh, I did the sessions back in April uh, for May 2022 world events. Uh, I did the session. I recorded the session. Just ran out of time to post it. It's been a crazy month, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here. Uh, but it's interesting because, uh, again, I was targeting news events that, as they were reported on the website unknowncountry.com. I didn't spend a lot of time looking for feedback, but I did glance at the headlines at Unknown Country, and I didn't see a lot of target contact. I'm wondering if creating these videos and posting it is part of my feedback loop and actually what I'm remote viewing is myself in the future finding the feedback as opposed to the actual events themselves. Uh, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Maybe I, ha I do have target contact and just uh, haven't scrutinized my data enough, but unfortunately it's not out there, so I'm not going to talk much more about it. But that's something I'm wondering about is um, exactly what role my feedback plays. I know it's significant in you know my remote viewing, but what exactly am I, where am I getting my data from? Is it myself or is it the actual events? So uh, I'm going to go through my uh, events here for this month that I'm predicting for June. I'm a few days behind on where I want it to be, but here we go. Um, I would like to comment that the past few months, the past two months, have been very challenging uh, intuitively, psychically, as a remote viewer, for me personally. Uh, I think there's a lot going on in the world. In addition, there's been a lot going on uh, in, in my job, with my family, and that makes it difficult to remote view. Um, it, it, I, I've had a hard time connecting and feeling connected and i think actually what i'm dealing with has been sensory overload and it's something that i think as a viewer i need to learn to better manage um but i got to a point I, you know i do these personal sessions for myself with remote viewing as i'm exploring consciousness and, and my own life and my own reality um and gain some pretty profound insights on it but one of the things one of the data points that came back for me was that uh right now i'm at a point where I have zero contact with all of my different normal processes at some moments, and in other moments, then I have all of my senses active and on high alert as I'm trying to make decisions uh, based on the state of affairs in the world and things that are best for me and for my family. Um, I, I feel that I either, either have no intuitive pull or every process that I use, meaning you know my heart, my gut, my remote viewing, my intuition, uh, all of them fire on at once, and every one of them is pointing at different data points, pulling me in a different direction. So I either got nothing, or I've got everything, and that's been very stressful for me. Uh, and again, I think that's the danger of being heavily front loaded with things too, because then your conscious mind gets in and starts trying to analyze and interpret things. It's been really tough. So I'm looking forward to the school year is finishing up in about a week here, and I'm looking forward to some downtime to quiet a lot of the noise that's going on around me in my personal life. Um, but I'm also taking this as a, as a learning opportunity for me. I really take a lot of pride in, uh, in, in uh, probably Daz or Edward, labels remote viewing as a mental martial art. And that's really how I view it, having trained in martial arts, being a, you know, a former soldier and then a police officer. Um, you know, it's, when things get hard, that's when the real training starts. Uh, so if I, can, if I can process and work through this in my discomfort, uh, then I can, when I'm comfortable, then, you know, who knows how, how well I can do with things. So I'm taking it as a learning opportunity, as a training opportunity. Um, that's just a quick update on, on where I've been, you know, intuitively and psychically. It, it's been, uh, challenging. So, uh, bear with me. Thank you for, uh, for sticking with me and let's get into the data, which is why you're all here to begin with. I'm sure. So let's take a look here. Okay, June 2022, World Events. Viewer will describe the world events that occur and are reported in the media during the month of June 2022. Now, my tasking is a little bit different here than what we're used to seeing with me. Uh, right after Ukraine, I think it was back in February, right after Ukraine kicked off, I was so overwhelmed with the uh, the heaviness of the psychic data that I was getting. I was so hyper-focused on war and conflict and the sources of, of media that I was using to get my data. Um 
I changed my targeting. I was looking at unknown country just because I feel that their reporting is much more, uh, it's less fear inducing. You talk about the scary stuff, but not in a way that's designed to spike that adrenaline and, and get you all nervous and, and scared and stuff. They just kind of report in a way that I like. So I was targeting unknown country. However, when I sat down to do my session, I felt that I needed to just open up to everything again. Uh, just see what's out there. So I have much more laid back. I'm not targeting specific dates this month. That was pretty exhaustive. Uh, pretty cool experiment. Uh, I just I felt I needed to take a break from it, maybe from all this fatigue that I'm feeling. So I just did a general what's coming in the month of June 2022. And uh, that's my tasking right there. So let's get into the data here. All right, as you can see, <clears throat> Uh, this was done on May 27th. I do have this timestamp digitally somewhere. Um, I was feeling pretty tired when I started this. I did two sessions for this month. Uh, as we go through, lots of low-level data, data here at first. And this ended up being, uh, look, I had the word chariot, slow moving, had sweet coffee smells. That was interesting. And then we got into like a vehicle moving fast as an AOL. And I had a glimpse of this very futuristic looking car. And I've had some AOLs a couple times of the movie Tron. Um, and in thinking about this, it's this, it was just this very curvature of this ve the curvature of this vehicle, very aerodynamic. It was really cool, uh, a fast-moving vehicle, futuristic-looking, smooth, almost frictionless. And then I got a person on a motorcycle. So is it a vehicle? Is it a motorcycle? I'm not sure, but it was very rounded and aerodynamic. That was the overall theme of this. And the person was like lying, leaning forward, almost like a crotch rocket. Or maybe it's a car, one of those aerodynamic cars where the person's kind of laying in the front like the Batmobile. Who knows? But this felt like futuristic transportation. It was electric and it was quiet, but it had an electric sound output. I know Tesla has done things like this to make it sound like a gas engine. Uh, I got the impression that's similar to what I was looking at here. Another AOL of Tron. What's the most important aspect of this? Uh, is it competitive? Movement of engines, enterprises, franchises, marketing. It felt very interesting to me. I like that story. All right, and something else I want to point out here, uh, this month, I, you know, actually not just this month, but recently, I, I've really been working on my interpretation of the ideogram. For those of you that are, are still learning remote viewing, this little squiggle here, that's what's known as your ideogram. That's the picture that, you know, reading some of Ingo Swan's work, it contains everything you need to know about your session. Uh, so I've been really trying to change or improve how I view the ideogram some of these sessions here or some of these um ideograms that i drew my interpretation of them almost reminded me of when i was uh reading tarot uh, i don't know if this is the right way or the wrong way but this is the way that i was trying for me and i don't think there's a right or wrong way but um what story are these little pictures telling me and i really tried to dive deep into that this month how are these pictures telling a story for me um so we'll see how my data comes out by the end of the month. So in looking at this one here, um, this had something to do with movement initially. I saw this as, as some kind of movement here. My next, and it felt ominous. My next ideogram here uh, dealt with some kind of a structure, blocky, wired, curving, steel was my AOL, hard, angular, again, structural and designed, gritty, granular, something concrete, and I had bereavement. And it felt boring to me. Again, this was an event or a location. I felt calm, expanding and contracting, buoyancy, soft curves, angles. Again, real low level data here. I had aeroplane, which I spelled incorrectly there. Uh, I'm wondering why. And again, my next ideogram. And I had, again, movement and life, fluid, soft motion, uh, energetics, composition, technological. And then I had rocket. And I heard aircraft sounds smooth sleek warmth and then i got this flash right here just a quick glimpse here pink sky mountains in the background and i wrote down man packed launched and a low signature and i had a person kneeling and it was significant this little vehicle here in green uh was small and I, again the word man packed so i don't even know that it was a truck now it, it looks like i drew a rocket here but thinking of mortars Mortars are a man packed, meaning the, you know, the soldier carries it in, carries it out. Uh, so this could be some kind of mortar launch. It could be rocket related. Maybe there's some kind of new technology or something I'm, I'm just unaware of in my ignorance. Um, <clears throat> but this was, this was the scene I had. Actually, there's probably about three people surrounding this here. It wasn't just the one person. I just drew the one person. Uh, but shooting this down range here. Now, what was the impact of this? What was the main purpose of it? It was to impose free will, justify, but it felt like it was in a new location, something we haven't heard of either in a while or at all in terms of conflict. It was colder there, 
maybe a show of force or a test felt like North Korea or Japan, like maybe directed towards Japan. I'm not sure. Um, but this was a, a demonstration. I felt underwhelmed. It reminds me a lot of the propaganda videos we see coming out of some of these other countries here. And we're like, yeah, big deal. We don't believe it. Looks like you made it for YouTube. Uh, so that's the feeling I had to had coming from this. Uh, and then I moved on to the next event because I was bored with that one. Now, again, looking at this ideogram, I need immediately labeled as life or and I put over here as an AOL or nations. And I was looking at that and it felt like one life or nation in relationship to another that is much larger. So you had a smaller nation and a larger nation. Like a competition or show of might and not force. Show of might and not force. A tiny power can overrun a superpower. The little guy can have an impact and although not equal, should not be ignored. Uh, he's smaller, he confuses and occupies or overwhelms the larger to level, to level the playing field or take the focus off of them. Then I had the most important aspect of this. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a metaphor, but I had these vehicles that were encircling a compound. I wrote the word dojo as an AOL, uh, but they created a ton of dust. In the quick visual that I had, there was a ton of dust around here, like vehicles circling a compound, dusty, I had an AOL of Taliban. Random, it was unexpected, surprise, it was technological, movements, distractions, diversions, uh, push, and then vehicle sounds. And then I felt there was a celebration and excitement started with this, but it was misguided. They feel excited and confident, but it's short-lived and misguided. I didn't know Memorial Day that it came and went, didn't happen then. Actually, this was like a couple days before Memorial Day, so that's why that was in my mind. All right, moving on. This is where I was getting tired here, so I didn't do much with this one here, but the top news event for June 2022, I wrote that it first had to do with energetics. Uh, it felt impressive as my aesthetic impact, movement and motion fluid that was sustained and orchestrated. Was it a cyber attack? Are there levels or components to this? I felt like competing energetics that work together. Tight, elusive memorial. And then stolen as a duration of time. That was an interesting data point. Stolen as a duration of time. A volley attack that was anticipated by some. Is it financial? It felt like an event impacting many areas. Uh, the revenue felt important. Financial systems, financial stratosphere, objectification, ratification, emergency meetings, open the doors, let politics lead the way, which is something I would never say. Uh, but it's all a charade. So this felt like, kind of like a ruse, maybe an impact on the financial markets. And I was, I was getting tired. I, I stopped my session here. So I, I came back the next day, May 28th at 7.30 in the morning. I felt pretty good. Back to the top news event, global news event of June 2022. Dealt with life and the event. Now, this feels a little bit different. Um, oh, maybe not. Let, let's, let's look at it. And I immediately got a glimpse of Putin and a man walking. Now, we can argue some of this could potentially be front-loaded because we've heard elements of this story in the media um, but this is the data that I was trying to report. Um, there was a man walking. There was a mystery. He was unknown. He was insecure. He had feelings of insecurity and a facade. Now, when I got this data, I, I, it was a quick glimpse of who I thought was Vladimir Putin. And I looked at him the way I look at people in my everyday life, and I'm analyzing their body language and the energy that comes off them and the feelings that I got. So that's where this data came. Based on that glimpse that I had, what feelings were was I getting with how I was interpreting what I was seeing? So he was trying to save face in public, but internally a sense of embarrassment or shame. I thought, this is a good thing. I move to my next ideogram. There's a flat situation that descends and then surrounds a life. Slowly, that situation encircles the life and surrounds him. This feels distracting, a distraction or, again, a ruse. And again, I felt this was boring to me. Who's the real enemy? I think that's an important question. I don't know what Mar-a-Lago means. I need to look that up. Uh, but describe the most important aspect of this event, stomach pain, gastrointestinal, ruminating. I said, Putin is not, is not well. And I had this just red energy in his stomach here. This feels boring or uninteresting to me. Now, after I did this session, I did see an article that confirmed or suspected the intelligence community suspects Putin has cancer. I don't know where it is. So I think the indicator here, the, the real gold nugget of data is if it comes back that he has some kind of gastrointestinal issue in his stomach area, then I'd say I had good target contact. Otherwise, of course, we can make the argument that it's just front-loaded data and I'm just pulling from things that I've read in the past. So let's move on. More top news stories in the U.S. for June 2022. Uh, attraction, and this was about a life and, a, and an event. And they had an attraction and a repulsion. There was a relationship between the life. 
I put it as an AOL Johnny Depp and Amber Heard because I've been seeing a lot of headlines about that. But two life forms. There's an attraction, yet a polarization that repels them apart. In addition, there's multiple life forms, like a mass of people that are separate from the other two. There's a fixation, a justification, something brutal. I had an AOL of rape, but I don't know that it involves rape here. Uh, what was the most important aspect of the event? Something about a stampede or horizon as an AOL to get that out of the way. Uh, my AI. The event feels like another distracting media story, focusing attention on a social issue while ignoring, ignoring larger concerns. And I saw this line dividing polar opposites of people, almost like a roadway. Crowds divided, but there was a sense of enjoyment among the crowds, almost like cheering for gladiators. There is fast energy. I had cyber kinetics. I don't know what that means, but the, this was something, again, it felt like one of those social stories that everybody gets wrapped up in and is all excited about, and they all have their opinions and their sides on it uh, involving two life forms. So that's what I got out of that. What was most What is the most interesting event to me for June 2022? Moving to the next event here. Uh, involved a structure or life. Oh, this was pretty cool. I had the word stratosphere, hibernation, hyperspace. I felt excited about it. There was something with adrenaline and cortisol. Involving the human body. Impacts on the central nervous system. Felt scientific. Some kind of breathing apparatus. This is a visual I got here. A person with a gray face mask and almost like their underwear. I had well, they military. An experiment. Hyperbolic chamber. Liquid. IV. Tube. Frost tube. I don't know what that means. Something inhaled. An eventual calming effect. But this somehow impacts the central nervous system. It may impact longevity. Uh, something with a spike protein. Strict selection process to find ideal candidates. All right, moving on. Describe the top financial news for June 2022. Uh, this, to me, felt like a life form and some energetics surrounding that life form. I had flat or sideways movements energetics and life and i had an aol of elon musk he's an easy go-to with things like this especially when you're in the crypto world uh it felt interesting and exciting to me it had a lot to do with a life form much larger than others not physically but just in stature um or, or in reputation something about a rebel or a rebellion a bait and switch and I, I thought to myself could have seen that coming uh yet something about this feels positive it's beneficial for the middleman the little guy or the working class Idea of the people's champion, a barrage. People are elated, but don't understand the big picture and consequences of the benefits they reap. Reminds me of the Robin Hood app with GameStop and Doge, if you remember. It was like a little guy rising up to fight the big guy. The central life knows what he's doing, though. It's a manipulation of the masses, a chess game, calculated risks and consequences, a desired outcome that most don't see coming. There's an opportunity to take advantage here, to take advantage of here. Looks like a blip or anomaly. I'm not sure what that means. All right, friends. So there we have it. My world events predictions for June 2022. We'll see how I did. Like I said, I changed my targeting again, just how I was going about getting the information um, in terms of before I was focused on unknown country for my feedback. Now it could come from anywhere. Uh, and in addition, uh, in addition to playing around with how I'm interpreting my ideograms, which every month I'm doing that, trying to get better at it. So this is that was my process this month. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. As always, I'm happy to be back on the air and, and connecting with all of you again. Um, and, and what you think about the data as you're seeing things unfold? What do you think uh, we're seeing here? Um, the journey continues. Like I said, I'm hoping for some downtime in the next uh, couple of weeks and uh, to keep focusing on my uh, my mental martial art of remote viewing um and w what one of the things i'm noticing is how much i've changed since learning remote viewing and working so closely with uh with remote viewers on the crypto team your sense of an understanding of, of time uh at least for me has really um been evolving Typically, you know, you think you got the past, the present, the future, they happen in that order, and that's it. And now I'm wrestling with things of past, present, and future. Are they happening simultaneously? Are they happening uh, independent of one another? Are they happening as if there is almost like a, a fate or destiny type of aspect to it, meaning this is what's going to happen and we just happen to see it? One of the things I'm looking at, too, is, is the future communicating with the past or my present and influencing my present to make different decisions. And as I'm trying to make certain life decisions, 
with knowledge of the future, it's getting difficult. I, you know, being able to, to get glimpses, I don't even want to say to see the future, to have glimpses of the future, um, one would think would make it easy, but the glimpses that, that at least that I get from a remote viewing, it's still pretty ambiguous. Yeah, I can look back and say, I had target contact. I saw that event. You know, um, you know for example, I had, I had an, uh, data on a personal session that I did a few months back, and it involved a, a, a child and an ambulance and I, I couldn't understand that data it terrified me as a father I'm thinking oh my gosh what's coming from my kids um i ended up being involved in an incident uh with a child and an ambulance they're okay um but there's no way i think i could have used that data to protect that child and the child like i said the child ended up being fine but um so i, I it, it makes you wonder like are these events fixed or there's other times I get data where it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I could have used that data to change the path. But before we start going messing with that, what are the consequences of that? It's something I'm I'm not messing with at this point in time, but there are things that I wonder about. So now when I try to make decisions and I have these extra things that I'm processing, um, I'm taking that right now as, as points of growth on this journey. Uh, I'm going at a pace that's comfortable for me as I'm, as I'm learning, but... Um, it's a lot to think about when you start to realize, at, at a minimum, we can glimpse the future. What do you do with that? And what are the consequences of that? And how does that impact your everyday life? Well, for me, it's it's totally changed my thought processes and the way I make decisions right now. Um, and I think that contributes to some of the confusion that I'm feeling. But again, I look at it as a point of growth. Uh, and something that I'm continuing to pursue as I learn on this journey. So have you experienced that? What are your thoughts and, and feelings and opinions on it? I'd, I'd love to hear hear that as well um, as we keep going. So my friends, if you're still with me, I greatly appreciate it. I appreciate your, uh, your engagement and your feedback and your support with the good and the bad and the ugly when it comes to my data. So Dennis Nabby the second here with Sixth Sense Media. Remember to keep an open mind. Never stop questioning and let your intuition be your guide. Thank you.